like the title says, I've been shooting with Fuji for a year now. Actually, a little bit over a year, a year and two months or something like that. But anyhow, I know I did a video a year ago where I said that I love Fuji. It's a perfect fit for me. It's got great colors and everything like that. But am I still holding to that? Do I feel like Fuji still is the perfect fit for me? Have I found something else that I think is a Fuji killer? Do I want to change? Hmm. Let's get into that. Now, first of all, let's start with the basics. So the cameras, how they look. I, I just freaking love them, how they look. I love the dials. I love the edginess of the viewfinder, the logo, everything. I love the lenses. These cameras are actually even pretty cheap if you compare them to their full frame equivalents or if you actually even compare them to some other APS-C cameras. You get third-party lenses to them if you find them appealing, like Viltrox, Tamron, Sigma. They're all great. I've tried all of them on my cameras and I freaking like every brand that you can get on it eh, except for probably a few there's so many things that just fit here you get nice siri lenses i got the siri night walkers and a 50 millimeter anamorphic lens of course their manual lenses and pretty much manual lenses are made for every camera i guess now before i'm gonna start talking about the xh2 and the xh2s i'm gonna tell you that i'm not gonna go into the specs because i've talked about the specs there's a lot of people talking about the specs if you want to know more about the specs go see another video these are my feelings how i feel about fujifilm and these cameras a year later and if they're still made for me <laughs> Now let's start off with the positives. I know I just said some positive things, but I'm just gonna tell you more positive things. So first of all, the X-H2 is a great photography camera. I love it that it has a 40 megapixel sensor and well, it performs greatly, but it's not a good video camera. It has great video qualities and capabilities, but the rolling shutter is just a turn off for me. Then there's the X-H2S, which is a great hybrid. It takes great photos, 40 frames per second without any blackout. But the downside is you're gonna need a CF Express card, which is pretty pricey. But I don't know if that's actually a downside because that's just budgeting things. The X-H2S also performs greatly in low light when you're taking photo or video. And it has the better video capabilities than the X-H2 because you get 6.2K open gate, which helps you edit a lot and take vertical if you want, or, you know, edit vertical from your horizontal videos, etc. And of course, if you want real slow-mo, there's 4K 120 FPS. They're really nice on the hand. They're easy to use. I like the dials and everything, but I gotta tell you, it's not being a smooth road. Now, one of the latest issues has to be the latest firmware update. If you've seen the videos, there is a problem with the autofocus now. That is a big bummer. I got lucky and saw those videos before I updated my camera, so I don't have that update. But I am scared to update my camera right now because I don't want my autofocus to take a step back. Now, the second thing is the pinkish tones. Now, not in photos. The photos come out great. They look great. They're easy to edit. I love the photos that Fujifilm gives. But with video, every time I hit in a Rec. 709, I get these pinkish tones that are hard to edit out. I, I'm not an editor. I don't know really how to color grade. I've tried to learn it. I've tried to have patience with it. But luckily, I found Dehancer that helps me out a lot. Later about that. But otherwise, the pinkish tones kind of bummed me out. Now, somehow for me, that is understandable because if you think about the film days, every film had their own kind of distinctive tone. Kodak Gold or Kodak in general had yellow tones. Fujifilm had greenish tones. There's always different tones to different sensors, different films, etc., different manufacturers. But Otherwise, the pinkish tones, they're, they're not looking good. And don't get me started in the remote control app. That is a disaster. I think that's a disaster with every manufacturer. But with the X-H2 and the remote app, it keeps disconnecting 
probably every 30 seconds or so. So that's a bummer. That's a big bummer. Now, for those who don't know, my previous camera brand that I had was Canon. And the reason why I turned from Canon to Fuji was because I saw this uh, uncertain future with Canon. And bad to say, I'm sad to say this, but I was right. <laughs> Canon has been going forward on a road that is mainly for professionals and those who have budgeting or money to buy their gear, but I don't have budgeting, I don't have a sponsor, I don't have anything to buy Canon gear, so that's why I decided to change. And did I have another alternative when I changed to Fujifilm? I did. Sony. I was thinking about Sony for a long time and I knew more about Sony than I did about Fujifilm, but I decided to take a leap of faith. Yeah, I took a leap of faith. So yeah, it is hot out there. My face probably tells it all. It's like 30 degrees Celsius, probably even more. And that is too much for Finland because Finland is a dry climate and it is feeling awful. It feels more awful than in a sauna. So yeah, my alternative would have been Sony and it still is Sony. If, I've, if I ever decide to change from Fujifilm, it's gonna be Sony, but am I gonna change right now? Definitely not. I love my cameras to death. I learn to use them in different kind of situations and I'm eager to learn to use them in more different situations. Like I haven't been on top of a mountain with them. I'm probably not gonna go on top of a mountain, but still, you know what I mean. Would I suggest the Fuji camera to you? Probably yeah, but like I've said before, it's about preference. It's what you prefer, what you're gonna use a camera for. If you want good looking photos, of course I'm gonna suggest a Fujifilm camera for you, but if you want something that has great video capabilities, there's better options out there. Even though it's been a bumpy road at the beginning with the color grading and later on with the autofocus and, and their updates, but hopefully that's gonna change because they're gonna update later on, of course, like every manufacturer does, and they're gonna fix that autofocus issue. Of course, they're not gonna fix the colors because that's of the sensor, but that is something that I just gotta deal with. And if you don't wanna deal with pinkish tones, then don't buy Fujifilm. And another thing that I've said before is that even though Fujifilm probably didn't mean to build their cameras this way, I think they're optimized for fun. I'm having fun every single time I'm using my Fujifilm cameras. They're just great. They feel good. They make me have fun. I'm having a smile even right now just filming myself and thinking about how I'm gonna edit this video later on. Now, I'm not saying that the X-H2 and the X-H2S aren't any kind of professional cameras. Of course they are. You can use them in professional settings, do portraits, do weddings, do sports even. They're great for those kind of things. I suggest trying, trying them out at least if so, anything else. Now, yeah, I'm gonna keep my Fujifilm cameras. They even said that today is gonna rain, so I'm just gonna probably head out and make a video about a rainy day photo shoot today. So I'm gonna use these for that too. Of course, be careful if you're gonna do the same. These are not weather sealed in any way. So this heat is fogging up my brain. I'm losing my thoughts constantly, what I'm supposed to say. So I'm just gonna stop this video right here. If you like the video, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.